you're seeing here really shouldn't be working at all. There are almost 100 musicians on stage playing together with absolute precision, but some of them are so far apart from the others they can't even see each other. And let's take a closer look. John Rudolph, over in percussion, is at least 15 meters away from Emmanuel Beaulieu Bergeron, way over there in the cello section. These are very, very good musicians, but that doesn't mean they can rely only on what they hear. Sound travels at 343 meters per second, so that means any drum beat of John's is going to take a 20th of a second to get all the way across the stage to Emmanuel on the other side. John, could you give us something for Emmanuel to follow? Now, if John's drum beats are taking a 20th of a second to get across the stage to Emmanuel, then even if Emmanuel is playing exactly on time based on her perception, she's still going to be behind. And if you add in other players between them, like Andrew McCandless in the back row on trumpet, these poor players don't stand a chance. With some classical music, this was never an issue. In the time of Johann Sebastian Bach, for example, orchestras and halls were small enough that players just used their ears. But over the century that followed, with the Industrial Revolution, things got more complicated. Cities got bigger, halls got bigger, orchestras got bigger, and bigger again, until a composer came along whose music was so big, and so noisy, and so complicated, and so fantastic, that something had to change. Ludwig van Beethoven, more than any other composer, wrote music that demanded the help of another performer, a leader that musicians would follow, not with their ears, but their eyes, a conductor. So that means a conductor's only job is to give the beat precisely enough that the orchestra can follow, right? Almost. This is Peter Ungen, music director for the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. We always have to be anticipating slightly. If you beat right where the orchestra's playing, you're not really leading them. And Bernstein famously said, everything you do as a conductor is about what's happening on the next beat. So if somebody's going to play softly on a, on, a, on a next one, you give one, two, three, four. You don't do it one, two, three, four. It's too late. You have to anticipate it. The other part of this whole equation, and the one that sometimes makes the biggest difference, is this. The room. A Roy Thompson Hall does have a sound canopy that it can raise and lower to direct the sound this way and that. But even that enormous canopy doesn't make as much difference as the biggest acoustic factor in any concert hall, the audience. Once you put 2,500 people in all those empty seats, every single sound variable changes all over again. So think about that. There are 100 musicians on stage, all simultaneously looking at their music stands and the conductor, playing together across enormous distances, and each sound they generate making a two-second echo that bounces off the walls and the audience and reaches the people in the front row at a completely different time than it reaches the people in the very back. You see what I mean? It shouldn't work at all. But it does, mostly due to factors that we haven't even talked about. Like dedication, expertise, passion, maybe a little luck and a whole lot of practice. Hi, Tom Allen here. You can subscribe to more videos like this by clicking here or here. And if you have a burning question about orchestral music and how it works, leave it in the comments section. Thanks for watching.